So, Sintagot, Sun Miner, Avenue Exchange. Ah, Sibold. Dishonor before death, what are you? Time heals all wounds, or so say those who never had, who never experienced true pain. More than thirty summers have passed since I carry the standard of the Dark Light Raiders into Cutter's Cry. But not a days go by that I don't see the faces of the friends I lost that fateful day. Garibald the Red and his loyal second, Albreus to Stillwater. Simon the Sweet, always armed with a jab and a jest. Or ever I of a wage, Kieran Zabron, as quick to cast as he was to temper. Thermon, Thousand Gil, never has there lived a man with a tighter grip, be it on his sword or his coin. Let us not forget one ill mill, son. It's hard to fathom now, what with all the adventurers scamping around about like rabbits in the spring. There was once a time when bands of mercenaries were who the city-states turned to when in need of a blade. The Dark Light Raiders being the biggest and best of them bands. Such guardian-funded forays into hellish pits like the Arm Vale would earn us a king's ransom in a matter of days. It would only take a night of devil's play at the Mirage to see it gone from our purses. And so was the life of a raider. That is, until we took that job at Cutter's Cry. My brothers and I had stood against herds of giant buffaloes on Agamoro, snurbel infestations on the Pearl, legions of cold-blooded Sahagin from the abyssal depths of the Indigo Deep. None of that prepared us for the horrors we would face in Hell's Brood Holes. None of it prepared us for the Chimera. Bards still sing of the day seven of the realm's finest warriors set off into the bowels of that forsaken place, but only saw one return, Sibald the Stoic, spared by the beasts so that he may warn all others who would be foolish enough to attempt to despoil the Chimera's lair. Ah, my apologies. You did not come to hear the guilt-ridden ramblings of an old man, but if you have a moment... I was wondering if I could ask of you a favor. The final wish of an ailing soul seeking peace with his past before departing on his journey through the Seven Gates. In each of the thirty summers since escaping from the maws of that terrible beast, I have returned to its lair to pay the res proper respects to my fallen compatriots. However, the years have finally caught up with old Sibold. Try as I might, no longer can carry these bones. No longer can these bones make the trek alone. It is not too much to ask. Would you travel to Cutter's Cry in my stead? Place this bouquet of flowers upon the resting place of the Dark Light Raiders. And that would unlock Cutter's Cry. That's another dungeon unlock. What do I need to do with you? Doubt. Edwin and Carthus? Oh dear. My friend? May I call you that? Oh. Well then. Archon, there's a problem with the Cerulean, and if you think Edwin is vexed, you have no idea how difficult this is for me. about the Cerulean Mortar being laid, is he? Friend, pardon me, Archon. I understand the situation. I really do. And I would ship the stuff to him if I had any. Fact is, it's been a mighty struggle for many moons to procure processed Cerulean from Amagina and Sons. And now they've entirely ceased doing business with most vendors. It's a hard life being the middleman, my dear man. We pay for the sins of the producers like Amagina, and what do we get from them in return? Not so much as a how do you do. Edwin's quarrel was with them, not me. 
Do you not know? Concern has the exclusive right to mine Ceruleum in Northern Thanalan. They can do whatever they want. You can always try them directly. Go talk to Papa Wazoo at Camp Pl Blue Fog. I want to warn you, he's a smug little toad. Why can't I... This require... Yeah. Disciple to hand level 30. Um... Decent? I think that unlocks de decent. Synthesis, which lets you break down gear to. Um, now let's go back into the DAW. It's on our before death. Yeah, that's Cutter's Cry. Should be a goldsmith, right? Yeah, there's two markers there. We have not gotten to blue fog yet, so we're not really going to be dealing with that. Ah, that gives us our full AoE. Combo. You two played me for a fool. The data the simpleton monk brought me was simply astounding, groundbreaking, revolutionary. Yet I remained objective in my analysis as a scholar must. Poring over the data, I finally arrived at a disheartening conclusion. The two of you took measures of the same area values were near identical equivalences as equivalences mocking me as I struggled to reconcile them I could neither sleep nor eat lest I waste time not drawing near the truth and for what tell me what is it you two were doing in the field more important things than what you asked us to do Not this bloody shock or so nonsense again. How many times must I tell you? It is not, but imperceptible either. Call it what it is. To think I'd have mind to put your names under mine when my hypothesis was published. This life force, this spiritual energy, this god-forsaken eternal soul essence. You're not what primal nomenclature those backwards monk wish to assign to it. It is either plain and simple. They claim they are able to manipulate and amplify it through discipline and the opening of the so-called chakra. False. This is nothing more than the ethereal regulation of organisms, a basic and natural concept. In an attempt to explain that which science does not yet fully understand, the monks have erected an institution of control. Their teachings are unassailable by design. For none can disprove the existence of the unknowable. They promise power in return for abjection and servitude. Control and power indeed. Only that of man is the very essence of a religion should be treated with contempt as all religion should. Aether resides in all living things, as do natural mechanisms with the capacity to regulate it. This is simply life, not some mystical, supernatural endowment. Seed, of course. The heightened mental faculties of man allow for the potential to gain conscious control over those mechanisms. Indeed, it would appear that you and the simple monk have already achieved that end. <sighs> the discretion and impertinence of youth. I suppose I could be forgiven once. In my own youth, I was not the model of perfection you see before you. I too have made what some might call mistakes. Not myself, but some. In our talks together, the simpleton monk often spoke of the seventh chakra. 
Opposite Awakening is thought to be the highest achievement among the monkhood. I uh, make it a habit to know the tenets of my intellectual enemies. It was the flow of the other within the two of you which betrayed your falsehood. The whispering of your chakra, as I'm sure the monks would rush to call it. But serendipity must often visit Sandustrius. Just so, it is precisely these ethereal whispers that proved to be most intriguing. The waves of these sounds resonated perfectly with the other of the battleground. I can see you're by your vapid expression that you're missing my point. Allow me to spell it out. It follows that if one were to visit a battlefield with a certain ethereal wave amplitude and frequency, it would resonate with one's own aether. That is the phenomenon responsible for the initial opening of your own chakra. I cannot believe I'm being reduced to speaking in these terms. It stands to reason that for any ethereal wave, there may be a location that will resonate with it. Think of the implications, Archon. The seventh chakra the monk speaks of truly exists, and so too must an ultimate battleground to bond with it. The concentration of Aether in such a place would be unlike anything ever recorded. Forgive your past treachery. Guide me as it did to this great discovery. That, and I need you to do more work for me. Here, take this new aetherometer. Make for Lark's call in the East Shroud. My research indicates it is a very promising tract indeed. Set up the aetherometer as you have others in the past, and then kill whatever you must to obtain a strong reading. Slaying beast there will release the aether of the land that they are steeped in, and it may then resonate with your own. I suppose in the primitive terms of the monkhood, that would translate to the expansion of your chakra. Oh, and you'll not be crossing paths with the simpleton monk this time. I will sending him to be sending him to take your readings at East End. I have no intentions of conspiring you to con impede, of allowing you to conspire, you two to conspire to impede my research again. You care to know more about the events that have transpired at Lark's Call? Suggest you pay a visit to your local library. East End, on the other hand, is a fascinating subject of which I never tire speaking. Ask me about it any time if your curiosity ever gets the better of you. You are a bloviating. Oviating and loquacious. He's shroud. Mark's call. That's up here. So I should be able to. No, should be able to go here. Here. Usually the level 45s gives you the class gear, which is one of the reasons that as soon as you hit 45, you want to do it, because it is usually a considerable uh, item level increase. There's some weird way of getting to this, isn't there? Forget it all the time. Ah, right. It's like through here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, might as well kill this while I'm here. That is one of three. There's another one. There's 
is the last. Okay. That's that hunting log complete. Bunch of flame seals out of it, but you can't see that. These are a little bit sturdy. Just like to clear this out so I can use these things. Can't use that during battle. What am I trying to do? Now I should be able to use it. And that is a new weapon. that here, so I'm just going to have to deal with it. Place the other ometer here. And fight the other bound car. Not particularly sturdy. Ah, there's more of them. Okay. Try to use control. Try to use four while still having control. Hold. More? Yep. Turn to the Goldsmith's Guild. I want to try and at least, like, finish up. I don't know if I'm going to get the gear today, but I'd at least, at least like to unlock the item, the skill before I call the stream. Very much look forward to the readings of both your and Widar Gilt's etherometers. Is this you've already finished? And who are you standing there talking for? Come, come, give me the etherometer. Amazing. Simply amazing. Your soul crystal. It's growing more vibrantly than ever, is it not? I'll begin my analysis of the data with all haste. You've come to be quite the model pupil, Archon. Well, that I could say the same of the monk simpleton. I can see the feeble gears turning in your mind. Come, there's no need to feel shame at your ignorance. If you wish to know what has transpired, you need only ask. I promise to use small words. Okay, so that's a skill unlock. Now we have a full combo of AoEs. Let's get you put in the right spot. You go there. Let's 
fix our issue. Also, Simpleton Monk asks that I send you his way, should I see you? He waits you at Little Alamigo in Southern Thanalon. Surely you see Whittle go for the danger he is. He is the most dangerous type of mind. One blinded by revolution and revenge. I do wish you'd tell him yourself that people should live for the future rather than the past. But I did not know he was at the Alamegan Resistance. How saddening it is on the rare occasions you do trouble yourself to think you are wrong. Of course I know. What matter of imbecile do you take me for? No doubt Wittergeld thinks me the idiot. False. These two eyes see far more than you know. I too am Alamegan and love my homeland every bit as much as he. Go now. Hurry to little Alamigo. I'll keep you no longer. No doubt Wittergelt is already awaiting your arrival. So, if number serves. Pretty sure this quest is going to give you the level 45 gear. But, um, we are at the end of this stream.